You're watching 11 Alive Morning News. 11 minutes of nonstop news starts now. And we're starting off your 11 minutes of nonstop news tracking showers. Rain for the morning commute when it exits coming up. In your 11 minutes of nonstop news, we start with the latest on breaking news. A man is in the hospital after a shooting at a popular Atlanta club. Police say he was shot in the face twice. Ariana Manise has all the details. Atlanta police believe that the shooting was a drug deal that went bad. One person is in the hospital this morning and police do have a suspect in custody. Take a look at your screen. This is video from overnight. Police tell us this happened in the parking lot at the Blue Flame Lounge just before midnight and they were flagged down by a security guard working at the strip club. Police believe that there was a drug deal happening outside and that's when a person interrupted the transaction leading to the shooting. The victim was shot in the face twice and recovering this morning at Grady Hospital in critical condition. The suspect did attempt to run from police but was later arrested. Now police are still investigating this shooting and at this time it's unclear what charges the suspect will be facing. We will continue to stay on top of the latest and bring you the developments on air as well as online. Back to you. Ariana, thank you. At 649, here's what's happening now. Right now, Bartow County Police are asking for your help finding a woman suspected of kidnapping. Police say Rebecca Vincent kidnapped a young boy on Sunday. The Bartow County Sheriff's Office posted on their Facebook page that the child had been found and is being reunited with his family, but they are still searching for Vincent. She was last seen on Wednesday in a white SUV with Florida plates. That was near the Mall of Stonecrest, so she could be in the Stonecrest or Marietta areas. The newly released special grand jury report is giving us a look at the investigation into potential interference with Georgia's 2020 presidential election. Part of this report shows a majority of the special grand jury believe one or more witnesses may have lied under oath during testimony. The jury recommends that the district attorney seeks indictments for that crime where there is compelling evidence. There is no timeline for when the rest of that report will be made public. A daycare employee has been fired after one parent says their child was attacked by another child. Clayton County mother Tara tells us she picked up her son Carter from the Ty Lexine Child Care Center near Jonesboro on Monday and found these bite marks and bruises on his face. Clayton County Police now investigating along with the state's Department of Early Care and Learning. When we asked the daycare for surveillance video, they told us the camera in the room was not working. And that was a look at your top headlines. Melissa, we are off to a wild start for your Friday. Yeah, it's been a wet morning. We've had some heavy rainfall, some gusty winds, even causing some trees to come down in Troop County and some bleachers to be tossed over at Callaway Stadium. Uh, but right now we're seeing a much different picture outside on radar than what we did just two hours ago. The cold front that's responsible for that heavy rain now moving through eastern Georgia. So it's going to take that heavy rainfall threat out of here for the rest of the morning. And over the next couple of hours, the rain threat altogether will be winding down as well, but I'm still tracking that pretty much widespread rain across much of the north side of the metro this morning. The rain's a lot lighter though, but the damage is already done in terms of wet roadways and ponding and standing water out there. We've got rain across the metro that's pretty light, but a few pockets where it's more moderate. One over southern Cherokee County and northeastern Cobb County, not far from Highway 92. That's moving east into Roswell and up towards Big Creek area, and then west along I-20, another area where that rain is a little bit more steady. That's right over Douglasville. And that's going to move east and towards Six Flags here shortly. This is the front right now moving through Eatonton with that pocket of moderate rain. Currently 59 in Atlanta, 52 in Marietta, and 40s up in Dalton. You see that colder air on the western side of town versus the eastern side of the metro where temperatures are still in the 60s. We're expecting the rain for the next couple of hours to continue, but as we work our way between about 8 and 10 o'clock, that rain will be winding down. As it does so, you're going to notice the temperatures really dropping off the next couple of hours this morning from the 50s and 60s down into the 40s for the rest of the day. So although we're in the upper 50s right now in Atlanta, grab a bigger jacket because by 10 o'clock we're already going to be down to the upper 40s. We'll stay in the 40s the rest of the day as colder air comes rushing in with some gusty northwest winds. We could have some gusts today that are about 25 to 30 miles per hour, so it'll be a gusty day as we dry things out. So temperatures this afternoon. 40s to low 50s, much colder in the North Georgia mountains where we'll be in the low 40s at best. 
Overnight tonight with a mainly clear sky, we're going to drop down to the upper 20s. Then for tomorrow afternoon, back to the 50s. A lot of sunshine tomorrow and a dry day on Sunday as well, with a warming trend starting to move in by the second half of the weekend. Here's your seven day forecast as we get into next week. Big time warm up 70s Tuesday, Wednesday, closer to 80 by Thursday. You happening today, a group of protesters plan to come together to call for justice in several Gwinnett County missing persons cases. Two of which recently ended in tragedy. The Hispanics United Alliance plans to rally for Rodrigo Florian Mayan, a teenager who police say died of an overdose, and Susana Morales, a 16 year old girl whose body was found naked and abandoned. A former Doraville police officer is facing charges accused of trying to conceal her death. The flyer for the protest also mentioned Selena Garcia, a woman who was last seen back in October. According to a verified fundraiser, her sister posted. We checked in with Gwinnett County Police and they say finding answers in cases involving adults is more difficult than some people think. Being a missing person is not against the law. So if we don't have evidence of a criminal act, an abduction or some other criminal um, you know, action that we can articulate, a lot of times we cannot do things uh, that we would normally do to investigate something. We've reached out to the organizers of today's protest, but so far haven't heard back. It is set to start at 11 a.m. New this morning as county sheriffs statewide continue to look for ways to retain and recruit deputies. They could soon get some help. One state senator just introduced what he's calling the Back the Blue Act. It would provide extra funds to state sheriff's departments through a voluntary $3 donation when people pay their auto insurance premiums. Insurance agencies would collect the donations, then send it to the Department of Insurance. It would then be split among Georgia's 159 counties. County leaders could use that money toward advancing deputy pay and benefits. Georgia's lawmakers on Capitol Hill are working to cement the legacy of civil rights activist and Baptist minister Ralph David Abernathy Sr. in U.S. history. U.S. Senator John Ossoff and Senator Reverend Raphael Warnock introducing a bill to recognize Atlanta's West Hunter Street Baptist Church as a national historic site. Abernathy became pastor and leader of the church in 1961, guiding the congregation for nearly 30 years through the civil rights movement. Congresswoman Nakima Williams says the church played an active role in the movement. Ralph David Abernathy Sr. used his pulpit to lead the call for economic justice and civil rights. If passed, the bipartisan legislation would give the church protections and preserve its legacy as well as Abernathy's contributions. Happening today, a new exhibit at Macon's Tubman Museum will be unveiled. It'll be a popular one because it is all about Tyler Perry. It's gonna highlight his life and career all part of Black History Month's celebration. Tonight, they're gonna to have a private red carpet grand opening, then it opens to the public tomorrow. So it'll have memorabilia from his shows, from his films, stage, and music, also telling a lot of his life story. Melissa? And we're tracking still rain across parts of the metro this morning, but as we look our way through the next couple of hours, that rain's gonna be exiting, especially between about eight and 10 o'clock for the metro. By noontime and throughout the afternoon, there will be some breaks in the clouds, but it is going to turn chilly and gusty outside. We'll have some wind gusts today that could be on the order of 25 to 30 miles per hour. It'll be cold tonight, but dry for the weekend. All right, well, that's one way to describe it. And because of that, you guys are gonna stick around and keep us posted. Yeah, we're gonna yeah. keep on streaming on the 11 Alive app on 11alive.com so they can help you get through the rest of the morning. <laughs> All right, be careful out there, everybody, and enjoy the weekend. We'll see you back here on Monday morning.